and start again. Welcome, we are solving event of code. Uh, we are going back in time to the year 2018 and we are going to solve the problem number 19 in closure. All right, uh, let me set up everything we need for it. We are going to work in here. Um, it's going to be called day 19, like this. Don't need that. Probably we do need that eventually. I don't know. Um, we're just starting our second hour of streaming. Let's see how fast can we solve this problem. Day 19, uh, example. Well, we don't know if we are going to need an example. Okay, we're good to go, I think. Um, let me see. One of six. Okay, let me grab a water and we'll be back. Okay, day 19, let's, somebody actually sent me a link for like where you can watch the performance, like how long it usually takes people to solve those tasks. Oh, yeah. well, go with the flow, okay. Okay. Yeah, I remember this one, this was fun. Uh, flow control, like jump instruction, there's my own goes on to explain. Programs where flow control requires instruction pointer can be bound to register so that it can be manipulated directly. Okay, so you need to go to day 16, apparently. Wow. When the instruction pointer is bound to her, so I need to read like uh, two problems instead of one. Okay. On the other hand, we can reuse what we had there, right? And uh, it would be easier, probably. Um, which would suppose suppose we have following program. Okay. The first line indicates, okay, and your parcel input is not very hard. So we're building a computer, it seems. Um, contains zero, the first instruction set I. The first line, this is not an instruction, so every pointer doesn't change during the processing of this line. Okay, but who cares, right? Let's give one. Whatever. Uh, the instruction pointer contains zero, and so the first instruction executed. Uh, set i 
it updates the register zero to the current instruction pointer value zero sets register one to five to this one yes sets the instruction pointer to the value of register zero which has no effect as the instruction did not modify and then it's one to instruction point so basically we move uh, the instruction pointer contains one and instruction point contains two which point in the instruction at i this is like a relative jump the value of the instruction pointer two is loaded into the register zero then at i find the result of adding the value instruction pointer is four so basically we can we have here uh, and I, I don't remember this logic, but let's check what add I add immediate stores into register C is the result of adding register A and value B. So basically, um, here it means take value from zero, add one, and write it back to zero right and okay so the interaction pointer is two okay Okay, this feels straightforward enough. Let me actually go. Luckily, we have this kind of, yes. We have all the instructions here. We don't need this list, I assume, but we have this list. Okay, so we probably are going to need it here somehow. Uh, next, we also need this in um in here let's say the nineteen example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. example no and here uh, IP equals one yes yes and let's copy the input as well we don't care about this much mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay let's let's try to write this program okay so first is we need a parse function so Kind of like this, yes. Like this, like this, like this. A line, and what we do is we actually return um, operation and its arguments. Uh, to operation, we actually resolve. Okay, let me see if it works. Resolve. EQ R R. What, what does this return? Nothing, right? And this actually returns a function. 
Uh, so basically, symbol. This is what I need. So we do resolve symbol of long parse long a parse long b parse long c. Okay, so this is what we return. This is our program, right? Um, Let's call it program. Problem, yes. Okay, program is parse input, and we also need um, part one input. We need IP, right? Problem one, and yeah, like this. Okay, so program parse input. Uh, then we run a loop or uh, IP now IP you don't care about IP we use regs is zero 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 it's there's five of them right what does this say six there's six of them actually six registers okay so the six registers Wait, how many register registers? What does it set E? Set E A B C. Oh, it basically just says there. Okay, yeah, whatever. So this is our uh, our register. Um, if and regs IP pointer okay let's call it in if uh, count program well, actually we are going to need it to be a vector um what do we return register zero okay so we return register zero uh, and regs zero right but if it's not let op a b c is going to program Uh, and program op index right then we call op regs abc this is going to be new regs and we are going to record uh, well actually we need to do one more update regs ip inc this is two primes okay kind of like that no conversion to symbol what does it mean What? Or symbol? Mm, yes, sorry, we need, we need to write it like this. Parse didn't work. Uh, key must be integer. Okay, yes. Um, something is not right, right? Ah, we actually need to as line seven
We increased uh, once too much. Hmm. Interesting. But it doesn't matter because for a real problem we are not using the same. Huh. Okay, the yeah. Three, two, two, four. That's the right answer. Cool. Um, it it gives the wrong answer on example because we increase one to much, but in actual problem we are using IP of one, uh, so we don't hit this problem. It's fine. register zero started with value one what value is left in register zero when new background process halts so okay basically uh, we should write a function called solve uh, it will contain um, regs or maybe program ID and regs and kind of like that regs, regs, regs. solve pass input IP Okay, um, part one is kind of correct. And oh, what? Mozilla cast? What the fuck? Okay. And here it's basically the same, but what was the condition? The register zero starts with value one. Okay, so what's wrong? I don't understand. Oh, uh, yeah, now I understand. Okay, mm, part two example zero might never finish. But part two real example. It's a long program. Wow. It is a long program. I wonder if we do any reflection anywhere. That would be unfortunate. 
unfortunate. But to check this, we need this. Actually, okay, so it does, it works way too long, right? No, we don't do any reflection, but why is it so long? Okay, so there is some huge number somewhere. Um, can we make it faster? So there are two possibilities, right? Uh, either we make it faster or we figure out what's going on. Like something fishy might, go on, might be going on. There might be, um, I don't know what there might be like well, register zero seems to always be zero this number se seems to be growing right and this number seems to be not changing and this number seems to be increasing by one so what if we start with actually what if we start with problem? we start with this and one and we increase this number to be something like this Oh, something like this. Okay. Uh, connect, connect. Did I kill it? Yeah, I killed it. Connect. B. No. Now it has a value of one. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. So what if uh, we start, yeah, I should use interrupt instead of this, of course. Okay. Uh, okay, so now it's value of two. Now it's value of three. like okay so let's say we put the value of this much in there Now there is number two. I don't know. That's not it's the right answer. It's just a little bit of a stack. 
Okay. I don't know. Uh, but, but, but. Um, so two possibilities, right? We can try to figure out what this program actually does. Um, there might be a loop somewhere in there, like very expensive loop. we increase the step we try to solve it okay let's see let's see what's going on so this is our instruction pointer kind of right we use one right part two part two problem one yes um we blow this thing and then we get into some sort of a loop in which we increase this number we start to increase this number. We blew this thing as well, right? Um, and then we start to increase this number, that third number, there's two. So each iteration of those instructions bring this number, oh, actually, like, Yes, from 3 to 11, we start with 3, nothing much changes. We bring it to 4, then to 5, to 6. So this number keeps growing somehow, right? 3 to 11, okay. Instructions from 3 to 11. Um, So it's actually means like this. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. So we need to figure out what it's doing. Muller. C равно A by B, okay? A Q Q R, A Q Q R. C to one is A equals to B. C равно A equals B one, otherwise zero, right? Add the R, add the R, C. No, a plus B, A D D I. Register A and B value B plus one. Well, I can actually see R five, right? Equals R four multiplied by R two here r5 equals r5 equals r3 here r1 equals 
R5 plus R1. Um, here R1 equals R1 plus R1. Right. So this basically skips this instruction at all. If we are on seven or, or on six, we jump jump to eight, right? Is this? Yes, from six we jump to eight. So this is ignored. Ignored. But otherwise, it would be R zero equals. Um, R four plus R. ADDI means R2 equals R1 plus 2, right? No, 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 R2 plus 1. Yeah, okay, I, I forget that the result is on the right. Um, maybe I should write it like this. One, R one, R zero, R two, right? Okay, G G T T R, G T T R. Yep. Uh, no, there is this. C to one is register A is greater than register B. R2 is greater than R3. And we write it to R5, right? Then ADDR, we take R1 plus R5 and we write it to R1. And finally, SETI stores value A into register C. Okay, so stores value A to R1. So basically, this is jump, right? Okay, so wait, what set E set e means over A? So we put two to R one. Um, then we increase and we start with three, right? So basically, we jump. This is the jump that goes in here. And the only way we can exit from here if R2 is bigger than R3, right? R2 is bigger than R3. So R3 is this huge number. So if it's bigger, uh, we get here, we write one here, we add R1, we over jump and move to instruction 13, right? So we kind of can skip this um okay let me see if i can skip this okay so let's say we are at instruction three but uh, this number is actually this number right it's like but maybe it's seven okay so what happens now? What happens now? Um, this is what happens. So we go to three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? Nothing happens yet. It's okay. Uh, it's not bigger yet. Yeah, we could start actually nine, ten. So instead of going to eleven. We jump over 11 to 12. Actually, you know what I probably would be better off if I put n numbers to every instruction. 
I just need to make sure not to save it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I mean, lines are cool. But you know, it's cooler. Okay, we, uh, we let's say day 19 decoded, okay? And here we just don't save. Okay, but we, we need it. Okay, so we jumped over, normally we go to 11, but we jump over 11, which is jump to, to, to number two number three actually because we increase once more right and we get to to here and here we actually what, what do we do i could probably write a program that does it but yeah um so add immediate so we take r4 we add one and write it to r4 right then we check if r4 is greater than r3 and in this case uh, one otherwise zero and we write it to r5 okay and probably there is another jump so as far as i understand it it's some sort of nested loops right this is this loop uh increases this number r2 this loop is probably r5 plus r1 r1 um one to r1 okay so we jump to here and here uh set immediate one to r2 okay huh no yes we write one to r2 uh, yes 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 so we we drop this but okay so where is jump so this is one of the jumps right so basically and it drop jumps to instruction number three so this is one of the loops mm -hmm. if we get out of it we take r4 and increase it by one r4 is zero one two three four Yes, so we increase this number, right? R4. If R4 in this case is bigger than R3, okay, we put R5 and R5 plus R1. So we either jump to here. Um, so this number doesn't change much and basically we say this is a loop then we say uh this is a loop as well right this is the most nested loop this is the least the second ne nested so now this number grows. It jumps from one to two. Okay. Um, I'm also wondering what this is about. Actually. But anyways, yeah. And if R four R four 
which means this and we increase one four by one okay so what i feel we need to do is um, start with this and start with this yes Okay, and we get the number zero, but it means huh. Huh. my answer is too low. And I try it with this number, right? Um, no, so now something didn't work out, actually. We go, we get the instruction 257. Okay, are there any conditions like this one, for example? So we increase R4 by one. We like iterate even this in this loop. Once we reach something, we increase R4. If it's bigger than R3, we put R5. R5 jumps over. So probably we need to see instruction number 16. And we do, right? Uh, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, we skip 11. Yeah, we skip 11 because of this. This worked. We got to 12. We increase R to R4 by 1. It is now bigger than R3, so I get this. We add five. Huh. Okay. So we get 14, then because of this work, we got to 16 and Muller Mul is multiply register. So basically what it does, it takes R1, multiplies it by R1 and writes to R1. And in our case, it's Sixteen by sixteen, we get to five seven, and we get out. And all this happened with, okay, yeah, we but we somehow we lost our zero, right? And we lost it r zero, okay. Uh. Okay, but here somehow R0 got increased because we get to, to instruction number 7, to this instruction. How did we get there? From instruction number 5. Instruction number 5, if R5 equals R3, actually. R5. Huh. And R3 is Hmm.
Okay, so here we take R2 multiplied by R4. So we take this, multiply it by this, right? <laughs> so we take this, multiply it by this, we get this number, right? This is our R5. If it is equals to R3, in fact, How do we know if it's equals to R3? No. Huh. So this is our, our, our three, right? Somehow. Simple dividers or something like that. How do you call uh, mass prime numbers? Divide into or split So I want to figure out which number this consists of And I think that will be our answer Decomposing integer into primes integer into primes I would like oh yeah uh, the online service that does that okay so this is a number calculate the prime factorization is this okay uh, <laughs> Okay, this is going to be tricky, but, but, but. This is going to be tricky, but we need to figure out what's going on. So we take R2 and R4, and if they're equals, we increase R4, R0 by R4. So So basically we take this number and this number. This grows, this grows, right? This goes from zero to that, this grows from zero to that. We multiply the two. Um, and see if we get this. Okay. Uh, if we get it, we multiply by we add r4 to the mix so what i feel the answer would be is we actually need um say we have A vector like this, right? Mm, and we need to find how many partitions we can get out of it. Okay, uh, I think we need this comb combinatorics again. Uh, 
Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yes. And comb combinator combinations. Partitions. So it's kind of com partitions mean two max two. All right. So like left number might be multiplication of this, and right number might be multiplication of just this. Then multi we multiply. We get R5, R5 equals R3, we get one here. Um, if we get one here, we jump over this one, we get to here and we add R4 to R0. So we add the second number, right? Hmm. Okay, four uh, left, right. We actually multiply, reduce left, reduce right, right. Uh, and we make distinct. You make it into the set, right? And maybe let's map just to check that we are doing the right thing. We always get this number, which is cool. Um, See if this is the answer. It's a long shot and it's definitely smaller. What did it say when we my answer is too low? So it have to be bigger way bigger than that right okay okay hmm Hmm. 
why not well let's try let's try let me let it uh, let's follow yeah <laughs> okay maybe i decoded the program wrong right we actually saw the uh, yeah we saw our zero increasing here well yeah because this multiplied by one increase it to one right let's say actually let's 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 try I, I still don't see how is this two 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 three seven thirty seven uh, ten forty sixteen right okay let's say I want uh, this number is ten forty sixteen and this is ten thirteen let's run this program right and we start with uh, zero but let's say we start with zero let's say let's say we start with a hundred actually um, so we start with a hundred this multiplied this is this number right so we increase our zero by the number uh, and then continue increasing this part right right maybe there is initial value or something like that like let's um, let's start again zero 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 let's start with this no it's zero it's zero huh So maybe partitions is wrong. I wonder how many are is uh, thirty nine. Okay. Mm. Okay, so this is our problem. For some reason, we don't get reverses, right? So, like, if I run this, we get this, right? Two and this. But we don't get it vice versa, for some reason. I don't know why. Um, hmm. So there is vo there were no partition where well I don't can I don't believe it. Okay, yeah, uh, probably this this is wrong. No, I probably should run this, just partitions. I, I didn't understand what partitions, what arguments to partitions mean. All right. Um, part when equals to count part okay um let left right parts 
Okay. Let's run. Wait, what? Yeah, let's comment this out. Let's run this. Okay, so now we kind of. We still don't get two in the first one for some reason. Why? No, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. What the fuck is partitions? Lexographical distinct partitions of, okay, so there's probably some fucking all the ways of taking n possibly the same elements from the sequence of items, all the subsets of items. So maybe we need subsets. Huh. Maybe we need subsets. Nah. Okay, it's it's it would be faster if I just wrote my own, right? Um, hmm. How do I write my one? Subset, subsets. Okay, so this are uh, subsets. <sighs> Subset, right? Other is remove subset. Let's call it factors. Uh, factors. Factors, right? No. Ah, it's so hard. It's so hard. That's why I need the combinatorics, but combinatorics is. Uh, well, we can take subsets. We only need multiplication, right? So. Um, and we actually can do. Actually, all subsets sounds good, actually. And what we are going to have is reduce multiple subset. Even for empty one, we get one, which is also important. And the other one is going to be this. Let factor is or left just or we can call it R two for example, right? R two R four is going to be R two R two R four into set sort. Okay. Count not. Uh -huh, okay. So now it looks like something that makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And now we what we do is we actually take reduce 
and we sum the right one. Yay! <laughs> um, okay. Uh, number. Is this number? Unfortunately, part two is just going to be hard coded solution like this because I don't know how else to express this. Right. Yes. Uh, so the solution was to figure out what program does, right? Maybe we write a comment somewhere in here or something. Let's write a comment actually, yeah. R2 in zero to to this number, right? R four in zero to this number. If R two when R two multiple R four equals this number. R zero plus equals R four. Kind of like this, right? We can actually write it much simpler. Uh, it, it might be super slow. Let's let's see how slow it is actually. Um, let res tile zero do times r to this number do times r for this number when multiple r two r four equals this number uh, we swap res plus r4 res okay let's see it's kind of slow it's slow even in if it's written directly like this without like the interpretation layer but uh yeah imagine this working inside the program well uh i assume this is what it looks like to decode assembler by hand no it's not going to end. okay yeah but uh, we figure out what's going on anyways uh let's see main 2018 um. this was problem 19 right yes so as you can see, computa computationally, the year 2018 was much harder. So part one, okay, so part one prints something else, right? And then we got null pointer exception somewhere, okay. Mm. Part one, for some reason, returns regs and also prints. Um, hmm. Oh, this is because we, I put this limitation. No, we don't need this limitation. Oh, 
Oh, we, we can keep it. And it's going to be like this. Then part one is going to produce a number. Part two is going to produce number as well. Part three, for example, is yeah. Okay. I think now it's going to be let's we put hundred, 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 hundred here, just just in case. Um, Why, why, what? Day 19, part two. How could it not work? <laughs> That's my question. Okay, let's print this because I'm curious. Solve. A nineteen. It shouldn't call solve at all, right? It's it. Oh, it cannot execute part one. It should be like this. I think. No, 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 no. wait, wait, wait. Mm. Input problem one, part one. Input problem one. Okay, I don't understand. This works, right? It when executed part one. Still has to work. Okay, now I don't understand it. Part one and walk and walk and walk. No, I still don't understand. How could it work from here, but don't work from here? Okay. Um, Maybe it's a path thing. Inputs here, day 19. Okay, let's print, uh, let's print pr pr input and try again. The input is there, right? And if you start, if I started like this, uh, connect and run this, it runs. 
it runs from REPL. Somehow it doesn't run from not REPL. What the fuck is going on? Is this because of resolve? Yeah, probably resolve. Mm. I probably need it's like this. Yeah, it was resolved. Okay. Okay, uh, glad this is resolved. Um, let's return it here. Let's commit everything and that will be it. Yes. Let's run on stage. Day 19, decode it example on day 19. Year 2018, day 19. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. We did it. Uh, what is, what am I rolling between fingers it is a thingy to play the fidget if you will it's called beglary and it's just a piece of string with two weights i used one with where ends are also covered in string i don't recommend metallic ones because you will crash your laptop probably screen it everything but the ones with um, with a string over the end is they're good they're good and it's the most persistent fidget i had like everything else i get bored with this i will never get bored i i didn't get bored for a few years like five years probably or more um what theme it is uh, this is uh, alabaster um, let me open something so it's alabaster pg there is mono version there is dark version there is uh, just mono it's like black and white and there is alabaster without background but it's yeah, alabaster pg uh, it exists for uh, sublime scheme alabaster so it exists for sublime um there are five of them like in single package right it also exists for vs code here it's also called alabaster and i think there's version for intellij as well so yeah give it a try it's very nice i like that it it, it does syntax highlighting but it's very minimal i only highlight literals like strings constants numbers and uh this top level definitions and comments um and yeah I, I don't need anything else i think i think if you do more than that it will be a distraction so yeah how do i solve these problems with so much ease do you know remember the theory beforehand are you computer science major um I just have lots of experience, I think. I did study computer science in university, yes, so I kind of am major of computer science, I guess. I don't repeat any theory, uh, just common sense, I guess. For most of this, uh, you don't need much more than just common sense, really. And experience, right? So, like, you know, if you work with computers for a long time, you just get used to it i guess okay guys uh it will be it was fun uh thank you for joining we have seven viewers right now and i think we had more at some point but anyways uh thank you yeah and join me tomorrow for more advent of code bye bye